Welcome back to InstructiveDad.com, everybody. I am excited to show you this trick today. I don't know if it's much of a trick. It's just something that you can do. I find it useful on occasion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this toy that I have, or my kids have, and uh, it's a toy that doesn't move around much, but oops, doesn't move around much. It kind of sits on the desk, but it uh, uses a lot of battery. So I'm going to show you how you, when you have something like that, how you can replace the batteries with a uh, just a standard charger or a power supply that you can pick up. If you don't have a power supply, you can find them at your local thrift store. They're, they're usually like a buck. So you guys know how I like buying things for a dollar. Not the dollar store this time, but it's the, uh, <laughs> the uh, thrift store. First thing you want to do is open it up and check out what you're dealing with for, for batteries. Um, well, as soon as I see this, I, I'm thinking all these batteries are probably in a row. Um, connected end to end where if you were to uh, to take them out they would just be well I guess like batteries in a row like this this is called uh, being in series if uh, the batteries are wired where this connects to this connects to this that's called uh, being in parallel but I don't think that's what's going on I think this is probably a series wiring um, you can verify that if you have a voltmeter you can just take a few measurements and kind of play with it to see how the how the voltage flows um, look, these batteries are dead but this is showing me uh, minus 1.155 yeah, you can see that okay so if the electricity is flowing see it jumped so moving from here to here, I'm incorporating the juice from this battery as well. But if I move from here to here, I get the same answer as here to here. So there's a, there's a connection between these two points, right? And I can uh, then verify that uh, here's 0.271. I jump up to here, 0.271. So they're connected here. So I'm going to hook up my terminals on this end and on this end. And that's going to give me a... Uh, that's going to give me the power that I need. Okay, so batteries. I think all of us are pretty familiar with with batteries. These are AA batteries. You oftentimes see AA batteries, you see uh, AAA batteries, C cell batteries, D cell batteries. They're all basically the same. The voltage is the same. The biggest difference is the bigger the battery, the longer it tends to last, given that you're using the same thing to suck up the energy if you have you know usually the bigger batteries are in bigger equipment um, where it's needed usually you see these in like flashlights and stuff because you want them to last for a long time but still give you a bright light uh, yeah I wanted to show you so if you have this is just a simple light bulb if you were to uh, light it up using this battery you get just a little bit of a dim light but you get that same amount of light if you were to use a C cell. That one's dead. A uh, double A. Oh, let's get it here. Double A or a triple A. It's all the same. And the reason for that. Ohm's law tells us that the voltage is equal to the current flowing through a device times the resistance. So this light bulb and these wires have a certain amount of resistance in them. And all these batteries all have or all put out 1.5 volts. If you read on you can read up on the side they all say 1.5 volts. If yours says 1.2 volts or something like that, it's probably a rechargeable battery. A little different than these, but you can do the math. It's just going to be 1.2 volts instead of 1.5 volts. These alkaline batteries are almost always 1.5 volts. So um, the voltage, 1.5 volts, is equal to the resistance in our system times the current that flows through them. So no matter which battery I hook up, I'm always going to have the same amount of current flowing through and the same voltage flowing through. So uh, if I want to increase the voltage, I can put two batteries back to back and then the light gets brighter, right? 
because I went up in the voltage, so the resistance stays the same. That means that the current must have came up as well, the same by the same factor as uh, what I increased the, the voltage by. In this case, the voltage and current both doubled. So I'm telling you that because um, the batteries I just took out of here were effectively sitting in there like this, like a like that, end to end to end, from one to the other to the other. So this is 1.5 volts and there's three of them. That's a total of 4.5 volts. So the power supply that I need to replace the batteries in here is, needs to be 4.5 volts. Now, um, sometimes you can fudge it a little bit and that's what I'm gonna do today. I've got a, this is an old charger for something. I'm not sure what it's to. Has some plug that I don't quite recognize. Uh, but it charges for, let's see if we can focus here, I don't know if I can, well, anyways, up here it tells me that it's, uh, tells me the input is somewhere between 100 and 240 volts AC, and the output is going to be uh, 0.3 amp max at 5 volts. Oh, sorry, that's the input, sorry, the output is going to be 5 volts and a max output of 1.2 amps. So the reason I explain this stuff about Ohm's law is because um, what you need to find is you need to find a piece of, or a, a power supply that gives you the voltage that you need uh, and that can handle the current that you're going to draw. But as long as your current rating is high, that just tells you that this is not gonna burn up, right? As long as you're drawing less current than what this is rated for. Um, just because this is a high number or a low number that, on the current, that's not going to change how much juice goes into your, your toy. You're not going to burn it up by putting on a 150 amp um, power supply. This thing is only going to draw um, what, it, what it wants, okay? Um, and like I said, I'm going to be using a 5 volt. This should be 4.5 volts, but I'm going to use 5 volts, and that's going to be just fine. So right now I can verify that uh, what I saw was correct. So you go from the end of one to the end of the other. But <laughs> I said that's so funny. So see how you put the batteries in? There's a spring end that goes on this blank side and then you've got this knobby side that goes up against that other knob, right? Um, if you're doing that whole path, it's got to start on a butt side and end on a head side or vice versa rather. So I'm gonna have, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking of it, it starts here and winds through and ends here. So I'm gonna put uh, this one I can clip on and this one I'll tap on. Great, and I see the light come on. So I'm happy with this. Now the next thing I wanna check is how many, how many amps, how much current is flowing through here, right? Because I know the voltage is going to be five volts applied and there's some kind of resistance in here, I don't know what it is, but I need to make sure that the current draw is not more than my little power supply could handle. I'm pretty sure it's not because 1.5 volts, is, or 1.5 amps is pretty high, but gotta check it. So uh, I'm gonna turn my multimeter here to measure current. Something, something's not uh, Something's not taking, or maybe I'm just not getting enough juice. There we go. I had too much resistance on my amp meter. All right, so I'm showing that I've got about 53 milliamps. So right now I'm speeding up the video because I'm going to be doing something particular to my project. What I'm doing is I'm putting a hole in the battery cover to accept uh, a jack using just a mono jack. That's, it's an eighth inch mono jack is what it's called and I've got a, a corresponding plug that I'll be fitting onto my power supply. So uh, plugs and jacks you can find them most most stores like Radio Shack. I'll bet you even I, well, I know of places like Home Depot and Lowe's they have different types of plugs maybe not quite the exact um, like uh, stereo plugs that you might be looking for but they have things that you can make a connection with. In fact, you don't even need a plug. You could just solder the wires of the power supply directly to the toy itself, which um, one of the reasons I didn't do that is I wanted this to be reversible, kind of. If I wanted to, the way I'm setting this up, I could put batteries in 
and not have to undo any of my wiring. The only thing that uh, I would have a problem with is if I had batteries in it and plugged it in. Don't do that. If you have batteries in it, don't plug it in. You might want to set it up so it's foolproof for your kids, but if your kids are like mine, most of the time you're the one changing the batteries anyway, so, so you'll know. Um, I'm just using a soldering iron to, uh, to attach the power supply to the eighth inch mono plug. And the whole time I've been careful to, uh, to make sure that I've got my polarity right. That uh, I, what was positive to negative stayed positive to negative and how I wired it is positive to negative. So I know that when I, when I plug this thing in, it's just going to work. Uh, one of the things I found, I'm using just this old solder I found at a garage sale. I'm not exactly sure what its composition is. Hopefully it's not too harmful, but when I was trying to solder to the inside of the toy itself, it was a little tricky, so I had to actually get some of my, my better silver solder, and that allowed me to make the connection. So um, if you're doing this project at, and you're having trouble soldering, if that's the route you try uh, choose to go to attach the wires to the toy, um, you might just need a different solder. But there's other things you can do too. I mean, you can you can do this with electrical tape. You could do this with just wedging it in place using a wooden dowel blank for a battery, something that's non-conductive. But now you can see I've got it all wired up. I have the jack on the back, and when I plug it in, it lights up. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy about this. I think um, it's a really cool toy, but I just I hate changing batteries. More, more so, I hate buying batteries because they're so expensive. So something like this uh, really makes my day. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. This uh, this tip is kind of it's helpful. I've used it a lot of times to troubleshoot my little circuits or play with motors or fans uh, as I'm working on projects. And uh, I've also found other opportunities using it on like a baby swing and oh man, what else? Remote control it in, in a pinch. You can use it to, to change channels if you ran out of batteries. But uh, just be smart, uh, be careful. If you have questions about anything related to electricity, always make sure you, you ask if you're unsure because electricity is one of those things that's kind of unforgiving. But stay safe and happy making, guys.